My name is Sisil Amike, I'm a director and writer from London. Wait, how do you like it? <laughs> Young black people in this country would often aren't allowed to speak their mind, aren't allowed to have a voice, often erased from media. That wasn't as fun as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, like, no. No. I was about to join you. Never mind. Then. Don't think there's anything that's like acting selfish on British TV right now. I think what makes it unique is that the conversations are quite raw and candid and uncut. I don't see the difference between Biggie and Shakespeare. A black woman. Hmm. First off, I would say my mother always um, told me at a very young age, before I actually was familiar with identity and with myself, that you are a black British child. We're also Nigerian. This is one of the locations where we're just strolling, so we literally just go on a walk and we just talk whatever's relevant to that person, whatever's important to them. All these black creatives, myself included, come out and we want to do this and that and that. We're instantly boxed in. Oh, like, that's it's very white of you, but you can't do that. Like, that's not what black guys do. I can do whatever I want. Don't come at me with your boxes, because I'm prone to burn them down. Put you in it and set it alight. Strolling really, really reflects what young people are feeling like and thinking as opposed to what the TV and the newspapers want to tell you that they're thinking. In Europe, you don't learn about black history, period. If you do, it's about African Americans. You never really learn about our own histories or each other's histories in our education systems. I don't understand why white people in France say black. Me, as a black person, I would say noir, but a white person is going to say black, the English word. I definitely think Stone is a place where we can kind of learn more about what it means to be black in Europe, because it's one thing to be black in Britain, it's a very different thing to be black in Croatia, or to be black in Portugal or in France. Another series I do is Aki and Saltfish, which is a web series based on a short film I did. Tell me why Aina was shedding a tear at work today, please. Why? Denzel tears are rolling down her face. Because the ticket sold out, of course. And that's exactly how it should be. That's what you get when you steal my tea bags from the kitchen. I told you, karma's gonna get you. The web series follows Olivia and Rachel, who are best friends. Kind of just based on their friendship and the banter and the chemistry and the connection they have. So like that time when you were in that shop, you guys were being stupid. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm gonna have to ask for leave, please. Two characters wanted to get their favourite dish of Aki and Saltfish and they couldn't because all their favourite Local restaurants had been shut down, and then the only one they could go to was like owned by um, like white English people. What the hell is Bob Marley salted cod with vegetables, please? <laughs> they just call it a different name, man. No, I'm not eating Jamaican food made by English people. It was definitely based on my own personal experiences, but one um, time in particular, I was really craving some ackee and saltfish, and I went to a new place I'd heard of, and it was very much like a I don't know what it was meant to be. I don't know if it was meant to be Jamaican or just Caribbean. Everyone who worked there was white and all the chefs were white. There was like fake sand on the floor and they gave all the dishes weird names. It was very overpriced as well. Why am I going to pay more money for food that's not authentic in this place that's kind of treated my culture as a gimmick? Definitely was definitely going to spice them up, Definitely was. What, another coffee shop? Yeah. Like there's not 50 on its own. How original. They probably just moved locations. Nah, no, jerks off is jerks off. We ended up going to a local, authentic Caribbean restaurant and then when we got there, it was just really sad because compared to the other one, it was empty. No one was in there. This, done. This whole street, so... You're seeing it on a bigger scale. You're seeing areas where no one wanted to go to five years ago and now they're building flats there and everyone wants to live there. And it's kind of this idea of um, people wanting to give um, people on the margins of society the worst and then once those people turn that into something good, then everyone comes in and takes it from them. At the BBC alone in the last 15 years, there have been 29 initiatives to increase ethnic diversity, and the numbers have actually gone down. I agree with everything Lenny Henry said. There's not enough representation. I hope I'm not going to get to his age and still be saying the same thing. Um, I know I won't because I'm not trying to necessarily only work through the industry. I'm trying to do things independently as well. Welcome to Mogadishu Cribs. Yo, what's up? This is how I'm living these days. 
Hundreds of thousands of people are talking about weight trainers on social media. On Instagram, for example, the hashtag weight training has been used over 400,000 times. I actually have one here.